When you receive your Ute backpack, it's going to come in three pieces in a really small box. The stays are going to be outside of the backpack. The prairie belt is going to be separate. And then, of course, there's going to be the backpack itself. Here's how you put it all together. First, you must shape the stays. Here's how you fit stays. And this holds true of all internal frame packs. Your goal is to direct the load into the lumbar area. This right here is your bearing surface. And you want the stays to direct the load into that bearing surface. So the most crucial part is that this matches this bearing surface. And you can see right here that she's got quite a bit of gap in here in front of this stay. This is the standard HBG stay bin, but since she's my daughter, she has an extra deep lumbar area, and these stays are going to need to be bent to fit this area. So I'm going to bend this inwards. Now this 775 stay material is kind of hard to bend, but it is bendable by hand. I just put it across my knee like you just saw and bend it to get the shape that I want. Okay, as you can see, we're starting to take this curve out, but we're definitely not there yet. Still not there. Okay, that's starting to look good. Alright, now this is what I want to see as far as this bearing surface is concerned. And if you compare it to the stock stay, you can see how much curve I've put into it. Now the next thing I need to fix now that I've fit this bottom portion of it I need to give her enough adjustment space here. Now, uh, some pack makers might have you following the curve of the spine. I want it to dive further out. That's what I'm looking for. We have good contact through here, and then we start developing some clearance here. What's going to happen when she uses her load lifter straps, she's going to add some curve in here like this. But it's going to be a dynamic addition, and it's going to give her some good spring pressure on those stays for holding the, uh, holding the pack's load well. Uh, so you do not want to bend the stays back this way. Uh, if you have stays that will not flex, you know, some pack makers have stays that are really thick and don't flex at all, you're probably going to want to follow this curve. But as far as a stay that's designed to flex like these, you want to leave this here and allow the flex to come from hitting the load lifters. One other thing to mention, with the uh, Hill People gear packs, the pack is designed to ride closely to your center of gravity. We've got a minimal amount of padding here, enough to take out hot spots. Other than that, it should be right on your body. That's why we perfectly match this curve. If you have a pack that has a really thick lumbar pad, you might have to do something funky in here to account for that. A better plan is to reduce the width of that lumbar pad because you get better performance out of your pack. If it's removable, replace that foam with something else to get that load right into here. Again, this is your goal. Follows the curve, starts to depart, gives some breathing space up here, and ends up about like this. When you use the load lifters, it's going to do this. Now that we have the stay bent to the individual's body who's going to be using the backpack, now you can match the other stay to that. Now it's time to assemble the pack. It comes with the harness on it. This is how you access the lumbar area. This, by the way, is, is where you access the lumbar pad. If you want to change that out for something thinner or thicker, you can do that. That's up to you. These are the state channels. 
You take the stay, you insert it. Initially, these are going to be pretty tight. Once you get the stay fed into the stay channel, uh, the stay channel will stretch out a little bit, a little bit will be easier to pull it in and out. But you pretty much want to get the stay set before you put it in there because it's going to be hard the first time. There's a couple of specific pinch points. As you're feeding the stay in, you'll find a pinch point here because we have a reinforcing bar tack here. And then once you get up to this point, there's a bar tack inside running this way that you'll need to feed it over. And there's dual bar tacks on the side here, all for extra strength, but those things are going to make it a little hard to feed in the first time. So take your time. You need to use a mallet to get it in. You're not going to hurt anything. Uh, but then once the stays are in, you take your prairie belt, you slip the bottom of the stays into these two pockets like so. Close the lumbar pad. And now you have the pack assembled. Next thing you're going to want to do is on the outside of the shoulder straps, run your, your two uh, tensioner straps out to here. One goes here and the other comes from back here to wherever you want on the pals. So now that your pack is assembled, it's time to load it up and get the torso adjusted and everything else adjusted. Easier to do this with a load because things are going to settle differently when there's a load in the pack than when there's not. Pack adjustment. This is true for basically all internals. We're going to start this way, looking here. Now, in the case of the HPG shoulder harness, what we have is the U right about even with the nape of the neck or a little bit lower. The right adjustment point there is going to uh, depend on body size, but the basic rule of thumb is this thing should not be riding up on the back of your neck. It, neck. it should be comfortably draped below it. Um, you have the shoulder straps inside of the, the two low tensioner straps that tie into the hip belt. As you can see on the hip belt, the upper ties into this piece of pipe line, the lower ties in wherever you want. It kind of depends on uh, what kind of tension you need to run. If you have a water bottle holster or an accessory pouch or something here, you can hook it to the outside of the pouch using this G hook. Um, just whatever you need to do here as far as the tension is concerned. Now, facing forward, we're going to observe that we have a good drape of the shoulder harness here. The load tensioners are going to be tensioned forward, and this is pretty important here. The sternum strap is uh, an inch to two inches below the collarbone. Now, in the case of a smaller frame like this, it might be closer just because the proportions are smaller, but uh, on a grown man, it's going to be about an inch and a half below the collarbone. But this is where you want it, want it is this pinch point right up here to take the pressure off of the two nerve bundles that are right underneath here. If you don't have the proper tension here, you might start getting numb arms due to pressure on those nerve bundles. We have good tension here. Uh, one thing that I need to mention is the way that the HPG uh, prairie belt is set up is not using the center release, the center side release buckle uh, in a standard laced fashion. It's just passed once through there because these buckles are the ones that hold the tension. If you want extra holding power, you can lace it through these buckles normally and then you'll have the combined friction of these buckles and these buckles and that belt will not move once it's tensioned. You can see here that we have good con contact with the lumbar area like we talked about in the stay bending portion where we're directing the load down into the lumbar area. The, the hip belt holds the load in the lumbar area, distributes it around there. The load lifter straps curves the load forward and that sets the load right into the lumbar area so you get a good bearing surface there. Your goal here is to have as much of the load on the pelvic girdle as possible and alleviate the tension on the shoulders. Now, um, 
if you're climbing something steep, uh, if you're carrying a heavy load, you're going to get the load settling on your shoulder somewhat, and that's where the HPG shoulder harness really comes into its own because it does a good job of distributing that load. You can see, though, how there's plenty of ventilation space behind the, uh, behind the back here, and uh, the shoulders can actually move freely even though the load is tied in here. If you feel like you're floating too much here, it's as simple as tightening this up and bringing that load in. And uh, part of that's going to depend upon how much weight you're carrying. 